Hello, welcome to the next video in my playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models 1. And in this video, we take the sum of squares that we developed in the preceding video and we put it in matrix notation. So briefly, we took, we partitioned the total sum of squares, total sum of squares, or the variability, total variability, into variability associated with the regression line and variability associated with the residual. And that was in previous video uh, 7 in this playlist. Okay, so that's what we did there. And so the main goal of this is, is, is taking these uh, partitioned variabilities and writing them in matrix notation. That's the gist of this video. And then once we do that, then some follow-up videos after this, we're going to talk about the distributional properties of these sums of squares. We're going to develop a test statistic to look at, at how good or how well the model fits the data and how useful it is. And, you know, um, In previous video, five in the list, we take the scalar notation and then we write it in matrix form here. So this is a vector of our dependent variable. This is a matrix. This is a vector of the, the population parameters. And this is the air term. We also, in this PV5, we derive the least squares estimates. Actually, derive is not the correct word. We show that the least squares estimates can be written like this in matrix form. Now, in a later video, we'll derive it in matrix notation. But in this video, we just showed that the least squares estimates is written like this in matrix form. And it's basically a vector, and each component is the least squares estimate of, of, the, of the linear model the simple linear regression model. So we have looked at the fitted line and that's what this is. So we have, we plot our data X and Y and we fit the best line. And the criteria that we use for best was what's called least squares. And we came up with that and we least squares estimates here. But you can take this scalar notation and write it into matrix notation. Where well, this is a vector of the fitted values, you know, Y1 hat, Y n hat. Um, and th we also, like if we take what we know about the f uh, least squares estimate for our beta parameters and plug it in here, and that's what this is, right? Now, let's think about this a little bit differently. Instead of x times the least squares estimate, we're going to think about it as this matrix times y. So x, x trans transpose x inverse x transpose we're going to call that h and and the it's generically called the hat matrix or a hat matrix and the reason why is this vector y so y1 y2 all the way to y n if you pre multiply it by h you put a hat on y it's the fitted line so it's a hat matrix um and there's one other matrix that, that we want to talk about. So the so essentially the first next page and a half, we're going to talk about properties of H and J. And then we're going to go into the main result at the bottom of page three of writing those sums of squares into matrix notation. So this matrix J is a it's a M by M matrix of all ones and then multiplied by one over N. So it's symmetric. It's you know every L, every uh, component is the same. You could also think about it as if this is multiplied in. Every element is one over n. You know, it's another way to think about it. But the reason we do that is it creates a vector of the sample or the uh, the mean of our dependent variable. So every component is equal. So it's a constant vector of of y bar. But if you think about it, so if you take this first row times y, you get the sum of the y's, and then divide by n, you get y bar. Okay, so now let's start talking about properties of h and j. h is item potent. So if we look, and that means if we take h squared, or h times h, we get h back. So then we fill in what we know about h. 
but if we cover this up right here you get x transpose x times x transpose x inverse that's the identity matrix so we plug in the identity matrix and then times anything it kind of goes away and we're left with this which is h so it is item potent we want to show that j is item potent so j squared is j times j and then this is j and this is j and the constant out front we just take and multiply together and then when when you do this matrix multiplication you get a matrix n by n matrix of n so it's a constant matrix and you take one of these n's n so n divided by n is one so you get this back but that's j so it is item potent we want to show that hj is equal to j so you get j back now later on, you know, this is probably 20 or 30 videos down the road. We're going to talk about H being what's called a, a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X. But then since J is a constant matrix, it has all ones, you know, times one over N, it's actually in the column space of X. And then so instantly we will know h times j is j oh yeah you know it's an oh yeah obvious but we haven't got there so let's just prove it let's actually do the multiplication and show that h times j is j so um h it, remember is x x transpose x inverse x transpose so i'm going to do this in piecemeal just because that's to keep it simple and that's kind of the way my brain works so x transpose that's the data matrix so transpose it's all ones in the first row and then x1 through xn in the second row j was this so when you do this multiplication one times this one column you get n but then divided by n you get one so actually and you do repeat it so this first row is all ones and then when you take the your x's times 1, you get the sum of the x's divided by n, you get x bar. So you get x bar is every element in the second row. Oop. Now in a previous video, we derived this, I think it's previous video 5, we derived the inverse, so x transpose x inverse as this here. And now x transpose j we just did so that's this now we take this row times this column and so it, it's going to be the sum of the xi squared times and then if you think about this as n times x bar so you get n times x bar squared right and that is what we were calling sxx and then since every row and every every row is the same and both of those when you multiply this out you get SXX the whole time and then here if you think about this as negative n x bar you because know, you can divide by n multiply n and this is n when you do this multiplication times this column you get zero and since it's constant you get zero the whole time now you divide this in you know the SXX so then you get ones and then you get the one over n now we need we have one more piece to make that H we have to multiply it times X right so this is H so this first piece here we just derived is one over n and then this row of ones row of zeros and then X of course is a column of ones and then X1 through Xn so when you do this math this you get one and then this row times this you get one so it's one 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 and actually and then it's the same so then it's one x2 times this column you get one so you get a matrix of ones multiplied by one over n well that's what we were calling j so hj is j and so that's what we wanted to show now h and j are symmetric so if we take h prime H transpose so this is H and that's a transpose 
So when you distribute, you actually distribute this one and put it in, and then you take it this way. You know, you flip it as you transpose it in. So X transpose transpose is just X. And this you get X transpose X inverse transpose, and this is transpose. But this one here, you can actually take the transpose in, and you get this. But X transpose X transpose, when you do the, you know, rotate, you just get it back. So it's X transpose X inverse. Well, this is H, so it is symmetric. J is kind of um, silly to show, but J transpose, so this is J transpose. But every element's the same. So if you transpose it, you get it back, which is just J. Um, now we're almost finished with properties, and then we'll jump right into the main result here at the bottom of page three. So we're going to show that H minus J transpose H minus J is just H minus J. It ends up being item potent. So we're here. Now you you distribute the transpose, but these are symmetric, so you get it back. And, and so now it's H minus J times H minus J. So you take H times H, right here, and then J times H, and then you go H times J, you know, that's negative, and then you get J plus J squared. But H is item potent, J is item potent, this we showed was J, but now let's transpose that. So then, if you write it like this, you get this back, right? But since these are symmetric, you can just write it HJ. But HJ we showed was J. And J transpose, it's, it's symmetric, you just get HJ back. So notice here we have plus J and minus J. So those cancel. Then that's why we're left with just this. And then, so it is. So it's item potent. Now we're going to I minus H. Transpose I minus H is just this, so it's item potent. And so this transpose goes in, but I and H are symmetric, so it's like we can ignore that. So then we multiply it out. I times I minus H minus H plus H squared. This is item potent, so it's just H. So you got minus H and H, so those go away. You're left with I minus H. Boom, done. One more, and then we start getting into the main result. So I minus J transpose, I minus J is I minus J. And oh, and I is the identity matrix. I should have said that. So we're here. You put the transpose in, but those are all symmetric, so you ignore it. So it's I times I, I minus J, minus J, plus J squared. So we get... J, because since the item potent is J minus J, that goes away. We're left with I minus J. Now we jump into the main result. So here's the sum of squares total, which is written like this. We want to show that we can write it in matrix form like this. Now, and, and one of the main reasons is I have videos on quadratic forms and the distribution of those quadratic forms. When y is a normal random variable or a normal variate, then this has specific properties. And we're going we're gonna to go through that in the upcoming videos. But now it's just show its matrix notation. So this is this. Now to put this in matrix notation, you write it like this. So this is a vector of y's minus j, uh, the y vector. Remember, so this is a vector of sample means. So if we look at this, if we look at the first component, that's y1, and then this is a vector of means, so the first component is y bar. So you have y1 minus y bar. So that's the, when, j, when i is 1, that's the first one of these. And the same way here, if we look, and then so this um, vector, you know, is this way. So when you multiply this times that, you get, you get this back. You get this sum. And, if, and you make sure that is so crystal clear in your mind that this can be written like this. 
now we we can you know since this is all transposed we can write uh, factor out that y which is this so we're left with the identity minus j and that y bar and this one we can also write bring it up so we get i minus j y bar but when we distribute this uh, transpose it goes you know you have to switch them and then it goes into both so we get this but we showed that this right here is just i minus j and so we're done and so that is written in matrix notation sum of squares residual can be written like this in matrix notation so here's the sum of squares residual so it's yi minus yi hat and that in matrix notation you can write it as this vector product so this is y vector you know y1 y2 y etc y hat is y1 hat y2 hat and, and so when you subtract those you start getting things that look like this and then this vector multiplication, you get this exactly back. But here, if we, y hat was what we called hy. Remember, this is the hat matrix. If you multi, pre-multiply y by h, you put a hat on y. Okay, so we get this. Now let's write factor out of y in both of those. To distribute the transpose, we get this. We showed this product was just i minus h, and we're, and we're here now one only part of a page left and that's the sum of squares regression we want to show that it's this matrix multiplication this quadratic form so we're, we're here now y hat can be is you know the vector y hat y bar remember j times y is the it's a vector of uh, y bars, you know, the, the sample means. So then when this vector multiplication, we get this back. We write factor out y, write, write factor out y. Oh, I guess first we rewrite y hat as hy. Then we write factor out y. And then take the distribute the transpose, we get this. But this matrix product was this, and we're done. So that's it. So in summary, in the previous video, we partitioned the total variability into variability associated with the regression model and variability associated with the residual. And then those can be written in quadratic form like this. And so the, the important reason there now this becomes quite easy show, to show the distribution of this quadratic form, this quadratic form, and this quadratic form. And then we're going to talk about the relationship between these. Are they independent, dependent, etc. So well, anyway, I better end here. The video, I don't want it to get super long. Hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Now we're starting to get into the exciting components of, of linear models. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.